Well, the World Health Organization recently declared monkeypox a global health emergency. The disease has been found in nearly every state, including Indiana. But is the state ready to handle an outbreak? Mitch Legan spoke with the State Department of Health. Health officials are closely monitoring the spread of monkeypox in the state. They're urging Hoosiers to be cautious, but not to panic. We've really started to ramp up all of our, our different teams that work on these different aspects, whether it be vaccines, um, logistics. The disease is a cousin of smallpox and is spread through fluids, contact with an infected area, or prolonged face-to-face -face contact. Those infected might develop a fever and muscle aches before getting a rash with white bumps. It's not like um, really COVID where, you know, okay, I was in a large room and maybe someone had it there, but it's really those kind of close contact situations. 45 cases of monkeypox have been confirmed in Indiana. The Department of Health has reported cases in at least 12 counties in all corners of the state. So Weaver says they're positioning vaccines and antivirals in targeted locations for easy access in case of an outbreak. Many are men who have sex with men, but we have cases in women um, and even cases in children here in Indiana. Weaver says the limited number of monkeypox cases makes sharing specifics difficult, but the number of Hoosier women who have tested positive is above the national rate. We've already started a lot of the same things we implemented on the outset of COVID, having conversations with our providers across the state so they know what's available when it comes to vaccines and also antivirals, um, treatment, what's available, making sure that this is on their radar. The state currently has enough vaccine doses for 1,500 people. Federal health officials just announced more doses will come, but Indiana officials aren't sure when they'll arrive. So Weaver says they're following CDC guidance and, unlike COVID-19, they're focusing on vaccinating people after a potential exposure. If you get that vaccine within four days of your exposure, it can actually prevent you from getting the monkeypox. And if we give the vaccine between four and 14 days after exposure, it can significantly reduce your symptoms. Weaver says they're starting to expand vaccines to people at high risk for exposure and severe disease. Then they're hoping to open up to people just at high risk. They'll have to balance current needs with the potential for a future outbreak. We're really anxious um, to get that process started, especially if we hear from the CDC kind of a timing about when we're going to get that next allocation. That'll help us feel more secure in pushing the vaccine out for pre-exposure. Of the 20,000 cases globally, only five people have died. Nobody in the U.S. has died from monkeypox, but officials say preparing the state's health infrastructure will be key to keeping it that way. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Mitch Legan. Mitch is here to discuss the latest on monkeypox. Uh, Mitch, you know, you've been talking with health experts the last two weeks, but it's my understanding this isn't the first time we've been talking about monkeypox. No, yeah, we actually had yeah. an outbreak back in 2003, um, but it was a lot smaller than what we're seeing now. Nationally, there were only about 50 to 70 cases, and they were confined to the Midwest. Um, here in Indiana, we had 15 cases, and all of those cases in 2003 were actually uh, the result of people having prairie dogs as pets. So it's a lot different than what we're seeing now. Our outbreak is a lot bigger, about 5,000 cases in the U.S. as of this morning, and in Indiana, we had 45 cases. So that's triple what we had in 2003. And what's really concerning health officials about this is obviously we're seeing it here in the U.S. We're seeing it in countries where we don't normally see monkeypox. And at least at the beginning, a lot of this transmission was through sexual contact. So that's something uh, officials are keeping an eye on. We want to make sure we know how this is spreading so we can kind of stay ahead of any potential major outbreaks. So you've been working with some of our colleagues to try to figure out how, why this is spreading. What did you guys find out? Yep. So as Dr. Weaver said, it's not like COVID, so it's not something people should be freaking out about. But it does seem like this is spreading in a bit of a different way here in Indiana. Um, globally, 99% of all cases are among men, and 98% of those cases are among men who have sex with men. I wasn't able to get specifics on Indiana's demographics because Dr. Weaver said that would be a privacy issue, but our colleagues up in Indy were able to get a hold of a Department of Health uh, document that showed that we do have cases in women and children. We have two cases in children and at least a handful of cases in women, and both of those numbers are above the national rate. Mm. So it's interesting to hear you say this is most ab about men who have sex with men, and but yet women, some women, children. Yep. How concerned should Hoosiers be about this right now? Yeah, so it, it, it is spreading. That is concerning. But again, it's not something um, people should be freaking out about. Health officials say that that spread shows that people should be aware of this. They should, you know, maintain caution. Just be, be aware of how this spreads and try to 
um, cut down on those very close contact situations that we've been discussing. A lot of the conversation, as you said, have been about the you know men who have sex with men, the, mm -hmm. the gay and the bisexual community, and that does make sense because a majority of these cases are there. But I spoke with uh, one of the top professors at the Kinsey Institute at IU here in Bloomington. His name's Bill Yarber, and he was actually tasked with writing the first um, school curriculum on HIV back in the 80s. He was a really interesting person to talk to. He said messaging around this is going to be really important because if we kind of make this out to be a gay disease, that's going to create stigma. And he says that that could lead to even more spread here in Indiana. When that happens, and those individuals may not seek uh, treatment or um, diagnosis as quickly because of the stigma. They may not fe uh, feel safe with the healthcare community and then they may not disclose this to anyone else or family or something. So the health officials that I've been talking with say testing and vaccinations are going to be key. We have 1,500 vaccine doses here in Indiana. We are expecting more from the feds. We don't know when that's going to happen, though. So we're going to have to make do with what we have and just, you know, try to balance that potential future outbreak with the current cases. And we're just going to keep an eye on this as it uh, continues here in Indiana. All right, Mitch. Thanks so much for your reporting on this. Definitely something we're going to keep an eye on. Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. Interesting.